Today we're gonna max out this wood chipper. This thing's a hoss. Let's see if it works. Excited today trying out the split fire wood chipper on the big Kubota. Now, we showed you before the small end of the range with the Summit TX25 to the John Deere 2038R. And that just shows you the versatility of this piece of equipment. And surprising, a lot of folks have multiple tractors. Do a survey on that. We do a lot of surveys, so we get a lot of cool information about tractor owners that watch our channel. And if you have multiple tractors, it's one piece of equipment that can work on both of them. And yeah, this is a, a Cat 2, but it's a Cat 1, Cat 2, three-point hitch on the Kubota. And we've got a Cat 1 quick hitch on there. So we hooked that up with the split fire chipper on there. Now, one thing about my Kubota, it doesn't lower down to the ground quite far enough. No problem though, we just had a couple of pieces of wood that we blocked up on there. You want to have your splitter nice and stable and stationary on the ground. A lot of vibration going on, especially when you're putting the wood through there to get chipped up. And so get that nice and sturdy and stable you'll be good to go. Some interesting no so about today's setup. With our Kubota, it just happened to be going through a regen cycle, all right? And some questions might come up from time to time. Can you use your tractor while it's going through regen or do you have to sit there, park it and let it do its thing? And you're gonna see today we are using it to its fullest extent while it is going through the regen process. Oh, something else worth mentioning too. So we had this set up working on our small tractors and every tractor is a bit different on how the back end of it is configured with the three-point hitch, how far it sticks out, if you have a quick hitch on there or not, uh, the length of the PTO shaft to get back to the spline output on the tractor itself. And it just so happens that we did not have enough PTO shaft overlap. There's The PTO shaft is two pieces, right? And so it kind of slides in and out on top of itself um, as you raise and lower because it's just kind of a dynamic position there. Well, we solved that by adding on the PTO link, which gives us about five extra inches of length overall to work with, gets us back to where we need to be on our minimum overlap. We're out here in one of the pastures cutting down some dead timber. I gotta get this cleaned up. It's just, it's since we've moved in, two of the trees have kind of broke off and fell down and I wanna get the rest of it on the ground and uh, see what this bad boy here can chip. And so that's what we're doing today. Again, it's another, well, there's, we're in January in Michigan. There's no snow on the ground. There's a few flurries in the sky today, but that's about it. So we're out here getting some work done. A good day to test this chipper. And I was able to get my chainsaw sharpened. I used that steel two and one sharpener that they have, made that a really easy job. Now I wanted to push this thing to its limits and beyond today. Not that you're necessarily supposed to go above and beyond what something is rated for, but uh, that's part of the that's part of the deal on Goodworks tractors. And so we're gonna find some big chunks of wood here and test that out and, and see how it handles it. It says it's rated for three and a half inches on this plate, but that's because they rent so many of these out to rental yards, okay? And, and then you have all sorts of different operators. So it gives them a little margin for error. It's technically rated up to four inch that it'll chip, but we're gonna go above and beyond that today and see what it'll handle. Now, as far as split fire goes, they are a direct sales model. So they were kind enough to send several different pieces of equipment over to me to demo, do some videos on, test out, show you guys what they're all about and give you a good visual and demonstration of them in action too. And, and I, I hope that we're doing that justice because I wanna show you all sorts of different conditions for it and different applications, different machines, and just how well it works. So how do you buy Split Fire? You go directly to their website, Canadian website, US website, whatever you need, give them a call, send them an email, they'll help you pick out the right setup for your machine. They've got all sorts of different well, not just chippers, but they have a lot of splitters too. They've got a carry-all, gas-powered, electric, PTO, hydraulic, you name it, they can help you out. You're going to place your order right with them. They'll pack it up and ship it out. Well, so we were able to find the, uh, the max limit of this bad boy. And now, again, if I was going exactly by the manual, you put in smaller chunks. The bigger the diameter, the smaller the chunk you put in. It needs some time to recover. You know, that, that blade, that tip speed slows down when you're putting greater than what it's rated for in there or you know even if even if you're in the rated range right the bigger the material you put in there the slower you want to end feed the shorter the pieces in there
So we found the max of this machine today and it's well above what it's rated for. The laser engraved plate here says three and a half inches. It's technically rated for four inches. We measured this right here at about five and a quarter inches. So five plus inches, 25% more than what it says it can do. And it still handled it pretty well up until the point of when the driveline system started to protect itself. Now, if I cut this into smaller sections, like the manual says, when you're near the max diameter or potentially beyond the max diameter, then it would probably still be uh, taking it just fine, but I think it's enough of a visual demonstration to show it's going to easily handle the four inch that it's rated for. Now, I'm sure it was those belts down there that were smoking. Uh, pretty typical. I mean, I've seen that before. I've had that happen on a flail mower, and you've seen that on just your little lawn mowers at home, too. So we had the trailer here again. You know, if I'm going to do this a lot, we're just kind of doing this for for demo purposes. I'm gonna do this a lot. I'd, I'd fashion some kind of guard on there to collect more of those chips. You know, you can see some of them, really not all that many on the ground, uh, but some of them are out there, but um, it is a really handy way to move these. This is actually a different trailer. The last one we were using is called the Earth Mover. It's got a swing gate on the back. Now, this version here, really similar. The back actually just comes completely off. Um, gonna be a little bit handier with the firewood that I use in there, because that swing gate the wood tends to hang up on that so a little bit nicer here but overall really love these trailers from ultratech really handy on the homestead anyway folks i hope you enjoyed today's video i love using the big kubota whenever i can if you are looking for something for your tractor could be a big tractor small tractor we're happy to help check out goodworkstractors.com we have all sorts of tractor attachments we sell and ship all over the country every day of the week i love using the big kubota whenever i have a chance in fact we just recently did a review on it had it a little bit over a year now so check that out to get our thoughts there too and if you'd be so kind hit that subscribe button down below to see future videos i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon so i reached out to split fire let them know what happened when i uh when i overloaded the machine beyond the specifications you know i mean come on i like to push the limits right anyway so the bells were smoking and all that kind of thing and uh i wanted to see what they had to say about it and they said a couple things okay so first not a big deal obviously you don't want to make that a regular occurrence but that's part of the protection system that's on there i'd have to smoke those belts for a heck of a lot longer than that in order to do some real damage and have to replace the belt on there. But also there's two different types of protection going on. So first, they're gonna have a shear bolt on the PTO shaft, all right? And then they're gonna have the belts on here too. So if there's a sudden jarring reason for the, for the shaft and everything and the rotor to stop turning, that's when the, the shear bolt's gonna break, all right? And protect the rest of the drive line. When it's kind of getting jammed up and coming to a slow, a slower stop, that's when those belts are gonna start to slip. They're gonna kinda, kinda try to keep going and get through it, but then at some point they're, they're not, right? And so that's what you guys saw happen is those kind of the infeed going on, it's handling it for the beginning and then it starts to get jammed up and slows down and that's when it starts smoking. And so you have a couple different ways of protection on there, a redundant system, I like that. And you'll see we don't have it hooked up, but there is the emergency stop here. So I was running into the tractor and turning the key off and the PTO off and everything else. You could, if you hook it up, you know, hit that button right there and you're good to go. Once I decide what machine I'll run this on on a regular basis, I'll probably go ahead and hook up the electrical side of things, but I bounce it around, try to try out different things, and so I'm not there yet. 